One of the main questions people ask me either in the comments on YouTube or in comments on Instagram and occasionally in direct messages on Facebook and on Instagram as well is where should I buy fabric? And that is a very, very difficult question for me to answer. Not just because I'm a fabric snob, but also because I'm a fabric snob living in Edinburgh with quite a stringent set of rules that I try to live by when I'm buying my fabric. So we're going to dig a little deep into some of the reasons behind that, some of the things I can tell you, and a lot of the things that I can't tell you. So if you think that this is just going to be an ABC on where to buy your fabric from, you're going to be disappointed, but please keep watching or at least leave this on in the background because I need the money. So buying fabric is both a science and an art. <clears throat> it's a science because it involves things like knowing fibre content, it involves things like knowing the percentage of the fibres in your fabric, knowing what is represented by the fines from the period that you're reenacting, knowing the requirements of the garment that you're going to be making, and those can be pretty confidently stated when you're planning a garment. For example, if you're making an early medieval tunic, you know that you need a wool that is not too thick, but that is also not too thin, so that it has the correct drape, and that suits the environment that you're living in. If you're making an under tunic, you need a linen that is soft, or that will be soft when you wash it, and that is not too bleached white if you're looking at a low status persona, or maybe something that is fairly naturally bleached looking if you're a high status persona. So there are these factors that you can kind of put in boxes to say, this is what I need, this is what I don't need, this would be ideal, this would be inappropriate. Equally, it's an art because every person has a slightly different interpretation. That's key to reenactment and archaeology and every other discipline that I'm somehow involved in. You have your human brain and heart telling you what you want and what you need. And that's not going to be the same as the next person, or the person after that, or the person after that. It's also the art of getting to know what's near you, or what you consider acceptable. So, I wouldn't buy fabric from the United States of America, for instance, unless I were in the USA. Because I'm a big-ass environmentalist, and I don't want that on my conscience. You might not consider fabric from China to be acceptable because of the working conditions in the factory where the fabric was made, for example. It's a delicate art. When you're buying fabric, what should you consider? This is something that I can help you guys with. So when you're buying fabric, consider what you need and what you're representing. Let's say you are upgrading from peasant kit to merchant status in the Viking period. <clears throat> and let's say that you're not confident with your natural dyeing right now, and nobody in your reenactment group is either, so you're looking for something that represents a natural dye from the period that would be accessible to somebody of middling status. Okay, cool. Maybe you'd go for something like a pink, or a madder red, and you can certainly find that kind of thing. You're going to want something that's wool, or at least something that looks like it's 100% wool to a member of the public who's coming up to you. If you're okay with it having a little bit of cotton in it, or even a little bit of polyester in it, that's up to you. That's your decision. That's your personal standards. So now you're going to be looking for a wool fabric that looks like it's dyed with madder, that looks good enough to wear. So it's going to need to be of a fairly tight weave, probably a nice tight-ish tabby weave, because that's what the majority of them are, as far as I can remember, and you're going to look for something that is not too heavyweight, you don't want a blanket weight wool, you don't want a necessarily a suiting weight wool, let's say that you live in, oh, I don't know, northern France. New York State, where you can get cold. You're looking for something somewhere in the middle. So those are some of the criteria that you have to think about. You need to think about the colour, the fabric composition, the fibre composition, the actual fibres within it. Are they all wool? Do they have polyester in them? 
the colour, the status of the person you're representing. You are representing a person, and if that person is a king, that means that you have a much wider palette of colours to choose from than Joe Scumbag, who digs peat for a living. Although peat digging was a relatively specialised trade in itself in the early medieval period, but anyway. So that's a few of the things that you need to think about, which limits where you're going to buy your fabric from. If you're buying your fabric initially from, I don't know, the upholstery shop in your town, and you go there and all they have is really chunkily woven polyester fabric. None of it's the right colour, it's either a Barbie pink that doesn't look like a madder dye, or it's crimson of a shade that doesn't speak to your status, and none of it is wool, all of it is going to make you sweat. You don't go there. What do you do next? Well, you might have to widen your net, broaden, cast your net wider. Maybe your county, your département, if you're living in northern France, why did I make it northern France where I don't really know the geography, might have something available. You might see something in a charity shop, you might find something in a market, a local market, you never know what you'll find, especially in France, you do get antique linens and really useful stuff at markets sometimes, I always feel a bit bad cutting an antique linen to make new clothes. So you have to broaden your reach a little bit, and that's where the problem can start coming in, where if you're on your own, you don't have many people who buy fabric in your family or in your friends circle, you might not have people to ask for advice, and I suspect that's where a lot of guys come to me, because I sound like I know exactly what I'm talking about, so of course they think that I can help them. But the truth of the matter is, I never ever claim to be an expert. People have told me in troll comments before, and hate comments, you claim to be an expert in the Viking Age. I have never claimed to be an expert in anything, in any of my videos, so eat my shorts. But this is a problem, and it's a problem lots of people have. And my advice if you're in that situation is email a local reenactment group. Email a local tailor. Hell, go into your local tailor shop or your local, even your local clothing adjusting shop and say, hey, I'm looking to buy fabric, 100% wool fabric. Do you know of a good outlet nearby? If you don't necessarily want to buy local and you're okay with buying it from further afield, great, you can buy from a shop somewhere else. I try to buy locally as often as I can. So this green wool that I made into my cloak from my Penanula brooch video, this I bought from the Weavers on the Isle of Lewis. This is a Harris Tweed woven on the Isle of Lewis. I know. And I bought it from the people who made it. That linen is from a local indoor market. Last time I was in Leeds, I bought like eight yards of this because it was cheap and it's good linen. This cloak, that was given to me. Let's not talk about the cloak. I try to buy fabric wherever I am. If I go on a day trip to Glasgow, I will go to Manders Fabric and see if they've got anything in. If I happen to be going down to York, I might pop into a fabric shop. Leeds, I might pop into the indoor market. So it's really, really, really difficult for me to just give you generalized advice. There are loads of websites you can buy fabric from. I try to limit it to uh, fabric stores based in Europe, in the EU, just because I don't want fabric, I don't want wool to have to come from North America or Asia or Australia for me to make it. The furthest I want my wool to come from is Europe. Like, at least that's not too far away. Considering this island, Great Britain, used to run on wool production, it is disgusting how hard it is to find affordable wool fabric in Great Britain. It is appalling. Farmers are burning their sheep's fleeces daily, and it makes me physically ill. If you are a subscriber from New Zealand, I cannot offer you advice. Flat out, I cannot offer you advice, because I have never bought fabric in New Zealand. If you are okay with using a European warehouse like, like Sartor to buy your silk brocade, or Fasser House to buy your wool, great, but I can't recommend you anywhere local to you. And I know most of you guys sympathise with me in wanting to limit your air miles and the carbon dioxide emissions that we put out as people and trying to support local businesses and local craftspeople, and that's fantastic, but it means that unless you are me, I can't give you personalised advice, because I have never travelled 
to all of the places you guys come from. I've never been to Australia. If I go to Toronto to visit friends and family, I will go to the Toronto Garment District. But even then, I will shop around every single shop there, look two or three times in each shop, sleep on it, and then come back to the right shop for me. If I go down to London, I will go to Goldhawk Road, and I will look in every single shop, and then I will think about it over a pint or a cup of tea, and then I will go to the shop, and maybe I will buy a yard or three of fabric. If it's something highly specialised, Yes, I will order it off the internet. I have friends who weave their own fabric, I have friends who weave their fabric at home, non-commercially, and I can phone them up and ask them if they would please mind getting me a couple of yards of something if I provide them with the yarn. I have friends who uh, spin their own yarn and maybe I will ask them for stuff, but in terms of person X saying, hey Jimmy, where do I buy wool from? I haven't a clue, man. Maybe it's Burnley and Trowbridge, maybe it's Cochin and Phillips, maybe it's Burnley the Bolt, maybe it's Hertfordshire Fabrics, maybe it's Fasser House, maybe it's someone completely different, maybe it's Wooltrade.cz. IDK, sorry. I wish I could give you guys this kind of general advice, but I really, really can't, and that's down to basically three reasons. One, I've probably never been to where you live. Two, I will only recommend somewhere that I have bought stuff from. Otherwise, it's not a recommendation, it's a suggestion. And recommending somebody means that I trust them. And three, see what I did, that's good. Three, I can only recommend a place after I've bought fabric from them, tested the fabric, by which I mean usually a burn test, where if you light wool and it turns to charcoal, it's probably wool. And if you light wool on fire with a lighter and it melts, it's probably got plastic in it, so it's probably polyester. And that's happened a few times from places that claim to be selling 100% wool. Unless I've done all of those things, I can't recommend somewhere to you. And nor should I. Because this again, like the research, is a part of the hobby, is getting to know where you buy stuff from. And it may seem like an obstacle, but it's just an opportunity. And you could search for wool fabric shops your county, your state, your département, your province, whatever it may be, you will find something, and it's hit and miss, and it is trial and error. But trial and error is absolutely central to reenactment. Every single piece of reenactment kit I've ever made is wrong. Every single one of them. And I will put the research in, I will do all of the measurements, I will check everything, I will test the fabric, I will make it, and then, the fabric will be the wrong thread count per inch. The stitches won't be exactly as they were done on the original. The cut will be slightly different. It won't drape quite right. Every single thing I make is wrong. It's trial and error. I get less wrong every time. But, in terms of general advice, let's look at a couple of things. So in terms of general advice, Buying fabric, buying fabric online, I have basically three big points. Always, always, always get a sample before you buy. Any reputable fabric store will give you a sample. Normally it will be an, a couple of inches square, and that costs them nothing, because they have hundreds of yards of this stuff, okay? If it's a very specialist fabric store, they weave everything to order, for example, they may not be able to do that, but they should at least be able to give you some really good high definition photos and maybe a sample thread or two. And a sample thread or two can be very, very useful. You can burn test that. You can check the color of it next to some dye samples. Very, very useful. So always, always try and get a sample before you buy. Tip number two, always ask for the details. Get the details of it. If it just says it's a beautiful worsted fabric, is it? Is it a beautiful worsted wool? Is it 100% wool? Is it 90-10? Is it 80-20? Is there anything artificial in there? What kind of wool? What's it dyed with? Is it naturally dyed? If so, with what product? With what kind of plant? What mordant? Did you dye it? Did you get it commercially dyed down the road? Ask for these things. Most people will be able to tell you. Most reputable dealers will be able to give you information on the fabric. If you're buying from a bigger warehouse, they might not be able to give you all of those details, like precisely what chemicals were used in dyeing it, 
but they'll be able to tell you the thread count and they'll be able to tell you the composition of the fabric if it's 100% wool or if it's 80% wool. I go to a local shop for local people because I get to have a lovely walk through Edinburgh and because I know the guy who runs the place, he knows me by sight, he recognises me, he gives me a student discount even if I've forgotten my student card and he knows the fabric inside out that he's selling. He can tell me what is 100% wool, he can tell me which warehouse and which workshop he buys these things from. And he has a great stock of things like Harris tweeds and nice wools where you can see the threads. It's not been felted, which is what we want for most Viking Age stuff, with some exceptions. So, my third big tip is get to know dealers. Get to know what is available where. Ask your friends and fellow reenactors for tips. Where have you bought from that you recommend? Where have you bought from that you don't recommend? Where have you had a terrible time? Where was ages waiting for a response and then they didn't give you a good reply with no details and the fabric wasn't as ordered? That's just as important as knowing where's good. Because you might find somebody dressed impeccably at a reenactment event, ask them where they bought their fabric from, order that fabric, and it turns out that it's 50% acrylic, 50% wool, and that might not be what you're after. If you're working around fire, you want 100% organic fibres. That's probably tip number four, is buy organic fibres, because, oh my god, fire is bad. So, this is like a really vague and general video, but I, I just wanted to give you guys a reason why I can't just give you a general recommendation. I will not recommend you a shop in Europe if you're based in California, because the USA is more than capable of providing everything that you need with the dealers there, but I don't buy from the USA. I buy from British and European fabric dealers, because air miles. If you're in Australia, I have never been south of the Mediterranean, so I cannot give you a recommendation. I've never bought anything in Australia because I've never been there. So I, I don't really know what I'm talking about unless you're in Britain and you have the same sort of standards, I guess? Standards makes me sound really snobby, but like the same criteria of what's acceptable to you, you know? So I buy a lot of my fabric from Hertfordshire Fabrics. I buy a lot of my fabric from the Cloth Hall. But most of my fabric comes from reenactment markets, where I will go to a reenactment market where somebody has got in their van, driven there in the morning, laid the fabric out, and I can say, tell me about this linen. And I can say, any chance I can just do a burn test on this wool? And I can say, this silk brocade is fabulous, can you tell me who wove it for you? That is how I buy most of my fabric, because to me that's part of the hobby. Part of the reenactment hobby to me is going to these markets, going to Torm, going to Jorvik, and getting to know these people face to face, getting into this part of the hobby and the industry that has grown up around it. Because this is an industry, you know, this trade is a real trade. And getting to know the people in the trade is a very authentic but also very rewarding part of the journey and the experience. I love that I can tell you exactly who makes all of my tablet weaving. I love that I can tell you exactly who makes my scabbard for my knife, and who made my sword, and where, where their workshop is, who made, who made my temples for me. I love that I can do that because that's such a rewarding and enriching experience, and it makes you new friends. And sometimes it gets you 10% off. It's always worth putting that extra legwork in. Yeah, it takes longer. Alright, maybe it adds a couple of months between now and you having your kit ready. But. If I just tell you where to buy your stuff from, that takes the fun out of it. It's part of the fun. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really truly do, because it's heartfelt, and I want you guys to enjoy this process as much as you enjoy hanging out at your reenactments. I think this process is so important. And even if you don't buy the wool, even if you just buy the garments, I want you guys to enjoy building a relationship with the people who make your stuff and weave your stuff that you use. It's so important. I think it's a big part of loving history and loving the past is doing these things that people have kind of forgotten about over the last hundred years. Getting to know your weaver, getting to know your tailor, getting to know these specialist artisans who make stuff. Not on a production line in a factory, but in their back sheds, or in their gardens, or in their bedrooms, or in the bath, maybe. I don't know. 
just me. So yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed this, guys. I hope that this has been at least enlightening and has explained a little bit of why I'm reticent to just give you guys recommendations. Um, but as ever, I'm a Minoth, thank you for joining, and thank you so much to everybody who's been donating to my coffee fund and joining the Patreon. Uh, it's been really, 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 really helpful. Uh, and it's it's so wonderful to see so many of you guys enjoying the Discord uh, and making new friends and making connections. So, Dilchamaur. Till the next time, Tantronissa. Huilamatroh.